What's up? What's up? This is your weekly wake up call. I'm your host, Following Christ. You can follow me on YouTube at the name ZOE Freak95. That is Z O E F R E A K, the number nine, the number five. Don't forget that you can subscribe, share this with your friends, and favorite. Um, and today, I want to bring up a question that was presented to me. Um, the question says, can we help it if we sin, or should I say, after we have claimed to accept Christ in our lives, is it really our fault if we shall sin afterwards? Uh, what the person was trying to present to me was, is it our fault that after we have claimed to accept Christ and are baptized and we claim that we are Christian people, is it truthfully our fault if we sin afterward or can we help it if we sin afterward because the person was saying that they felt like that they couldn't help but sin. All right, so what we should always do when it comes to a biblical or a belief or Christian related topic we need to let the Bible answer that question for us in the Bible alone, not our own opinions, not our pastor, not our mother, friend, father, whatever. The Bible, the word of God needs to answer that question. So I want to just see what scripture has to say about this. If you follow me, let's start in the Old Testament and then we're going to work our way forward. <clears throat> um, in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 24, you can turn there if you like to follow. It says, but when the righteous turn away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live. All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he has trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. So, by this verse alone, it shows that a righteous person can turn away from his righteousness by his choice. But, here's the real question. But can he turn away from it by his own will? Or is it just a part of human nature that will eventually cause you to sin regardless if you are righteous or not? Okay, to better understand this question, we need to understand how we got this way in the first place. Turn with me to Romans chapter 5 verse 12. And it says... Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Adam's sin caused everyone born after him to be born with a weakened will, a lesser ability to resist temptation on our own. So, because of the sin of Adam, all of mankind have a death sentence that has been pronounced on them. Because Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, if you remember, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is why Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but it doesn't stop there. It continues on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. But this seems to be an issue. If you pay attention to these two verses, it says all have sinned and the wages of sin is death. How can that be? If the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord, is the Bible being contradictory in saying sin equates to a wage of death and God is still going to give a gift of eternal life because of Christ? Or is this matter being interpreted wrong? Turn to Romans chapter 8 verse 7. And it says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. All right. So let's define a few of those words in there so we can get a better understanding. Carnal. Carnal is defined of or relating to the body, sexual or sensual, relating to or given to crude bodily pleasures and appetites. All right. So we're going to define enmity. Enmity is a positive, active, and typically mutual hatred or ill will, a hatred such as might be felt for an enemy. All right. So with that, so by view, viewing Romans chapter eight, verse seven, we see that not only are we carnally minded, meaning we seek out our own fleshly pleasures and perverse appetites, but we by birth hate God and not only hate him and his way, we consider God a bitter enemy. So a quick question is this. How then can we say we have accepted Christ in our life if the Bible says we hate God According to Romans chapter 8 verse 7. 
We all have sinned, according to Romans chapter 3, verse 23, and because we sin, we deserve death, according to Romans chapter 6, verse 23, chapter 5, and verse 12. So, if you turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 6 and 8, I, I want you to hear what this says. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But why did Christ do this? If you remember in the book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it says, and I quote, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So 1 Peter Chapter 2, verse 21 and 22 says, I'll read for you to hear. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4, verse. For, uh, chapter 4 verse 15 says for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin no ask yourself how is this possible the bible says i'm born a sinner with a carnal nature how could i possibly live a life like jesus even after i accept him and not sin. Turn to Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. This verse says. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the son of God. Who loved me. And gave himself for me. So after a new believer is baptized, according to Romans chapter 6, verse 4, the Bible says that the new believer accepts God into his or her, or her heart. That Christ lives in you. This verse in Galatians chapter 2 gives great meaning to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So this brings a dilemma. If Christ lives in a believer and he was and is sinless, how could or why would anyone sin or want to sin? James chapter 1 verse 13 verse 15 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. But how is this possible, you say? How can an allegedly saved person steal sin? The Bible shows that there are two different groups of people. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Why does God's son point out the heart in this verse? If you turn to Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 and it says, For the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Christ says in John chapter 10 verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. This shows there are two different groups of people. Those who follow God and those who do not. And how can we know that we are truly following Christ? John chapter 14 verse 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Which commandments are these? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first.
first commandment. That's from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 and Mark chapter 12 verse 30. And the second is like namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. That's from Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18 and Mark chapter 12 verse 31. Look them up if you do not believe me. But how can we know that we are keeping these commandments and obeying God? This is simple. Simply by following the Ten Commandments. Yes, even the fourth, the Sabbath commandment. Romans chapter 13 verses 8 through 10 says, Owe no man anything, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill towards his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. The Bible is clear as day on this subject. Someone who really loves God would not want to sin. If you or anyone you know thinks that just because you call on the name of Jesus but still continue to sin because you can't help it, even if you claim that you are saved, you are sadly mistaken. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 verses 16, verses 18 and verses 20, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather of thorns or figs of thistles? A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. You have to remember that in John chapter 15, verse 5, it says from our dear Lord's lips, I am the vine, ye are the branches. The same that abideth in me, and I in him, bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. How can you say you know God and bring forth corrupt fruit? 1 John chapter 2 verse 3 through 4 says, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Ye see, you see, I say, there is a difference. Someone who truly knows and loves God can accidentally sin. And 1 John chapter 2 verse 1 says, My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. If you truly love God, sin is the last thing you would ever want to do. You can accidentally, that's an accident. People make accidents. But we would never purposely sin when we love God. Because sin causes not only great damage to our physical and spiritual nature, but it grieves God's spirit deeply. When you willingly continue in sin, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, If we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3 says, How shall we escape if we neglect such great salvation? How can someone claim to be of God and continue in sin? You want to know the answer to this question is very easy. You are of the of your father, the devil and the lust of your father. You will do. The Bible says a man born of God commits no sin for God seed remains in him and he cannot sin. Continuing in this false doctrine will only sear your conscience and make you deny the truth and believe lies and fables. The Bible says. God's people will follow his command and have faith like Jesus to the very end of this world. If you want to accept this philosophy that you cannot do anything else but sin, even after you have followed Christ or accepted him, you are only deceiving yourself. And because you receive not the love of the truth, God will send great delusion that you should believe a lie. You do not have to accept this. You don't even have to like this. But I'm going to tell you one thing. The truth stays the truth whether you believe it or not. God bless.